In the Harry Potter books, Professor Snape has a portions classroom for teaching, as well as a separate private office in the dungeon of Hogwarts. In the movies, they essentially removed Snape's office altogether. They used the same portion classroom set for both rooms. I thought this was a shame, so I decided to build Snape an office of his own in Blender. A lot of the techniques that I used to make this render can be applied to any fantasy scene or medieval castle environment that you want to create. So at the beginning of this process, I didn't really have a clue how I wanted to set up the composition of the scene. So I thought I would just start by modeling some of the assets that I knew would be in the final render. And I began that with the desk. I figured that someone like Snape would have a really large, imposing desk, quite like the resolute desk that's in the Oval Office. The actual shape of the desk itself came into place really easily. It was mostly just simple box modeling with a few bevels, a couple of extrusions just to get the basic shape into place. Since Snape is the head of Slytherin House, I thought it would be a nice touch to create a crest with a snake carved into the front of the desk. So I made this quick mock-up template in Photoshop and then I imported that into Blender. To create the shape, I added a plane and then I extruded out the edges to match the shape of the snake. Here's a quick tip, if you select one edge in edit mode, hold down control, Blender will extrude that edge to wherever you click. I then went around the whole snake and I just used scale and rotate and grab tools to get it into the correct shape. The shield portion of the crest I created with a few loop cuts and the proportional editing tools. I joined those two objects together, then I quickly filled them in with some quads. I probably could have just made this one big end gone to be honest, since it's just a flat shape, but it didn't take very long and it doesn't really matter. I marked some seams as being sharp and then I applied the subdivision surface modifier just to complete the crest. Finally, to finish off the desk, I made these little wooden blocks to go around the end and I just used an array modifier so they would all have a very even spacing going all the way around. So after a quick bit of texturing in Substance Painter, we've got ourselves a pretty nice looking desk. But it looks a bit bare right now, so obviously we need some sort of Hogwarts looking magical crap to populate the top of the desk. So I made an ink pot with a holder on the side so you could have a place to put your quill because apparently everybody in Hogwarts writes with a quill for some reason. That one's never really made sense to me. Like, I understand that electrical equipment won't work because of all the magic, but what's wrong with a ballpoint pen? Or just a pencil? Anyway, moving on. I didn't have a reference for the ink pot, so I just made this up as I went. To create the little quill holders on the side, I started with a cylinder. I selected all the edges around the outside and extruded them out. I selected one side of the edges and I scaled them to zero on the X on the Y axis, sorry, so they'd be perfectly flat. Then I selected the top and bottom little circles and I did a quick search for the bridge tool and that just cut out a circular hole in the middle of the object. I thought this shape would look a little bit better if it just had some bevel around the edges. I didn't want to have to apply it to all three. What was quicker is if I just selected the outer two objects, then selected the one in the middle. I press Ctrl and L and copied the object data and all that does is it swaps the two meshes that I selected with the one in the middle so they all look the same. With the ink pot done I had to make the actual quill itself and I realised that I'd never tackled anything like a feather in Blender and I had no idea how I was going to make it. I did a quick knock up as a test just to see if this idea would work and actually it ended up staying in the final render because I thought it looked pretty good. The stem was just made with a cylinder and I used a little bit of proportional editing to get it roughly in the shape of the stem of the feather. Then I selected the edges down each side of that object, duplicated them and with Control P I made that a separate object. I added the hair particle system to the object, adjusted the length down, then I just used the comb tool to brush it roughly into the shape of a feather. I went in the particle settings and just hid that shape as the um, the emission object so you wouldn't see it in the final render and I thought that looked fairly decent. For the hair material I projection mapped the reference image onto the emission mesh so it would have all of the colours of the original feather. I plugged the reference image into the hair BSDF node but that looked a little bit rubbish so I swapped that out with the principal node instead. You can bump up the transmission a little bit and you've got yourself a pretty good looking feather. I quickly made the texture of a letter in Photoshop 
and I used that same texture to define the bump and the roughness value of the paper. I added a few loop cuts and then just used the proportional editing so there'd be some creases and wrinkles in the paper. Then I used a solidify modifier just to give it a little bit of thickness. One of the reference images that I used for the desk had a crystal ball paperweight on the desk. I figured this is a fantasy setting so why not make an actual crystal ball and I wanted to have this sort of magical glow so this is how I created that effect. I added a noise node into the glass material and then I fed that into a colour ramp. I crunched up the values on the colour ramp and I set one of them to be a light green and the other one to be a darker sort of turquoise colour. Then I fed that into an emission node and I plugged the emission node into the volume of the glass material. That gives us this nice sort of glowing effect but I only want the light to be coming from the bottom of the sphere. So how do we do that? Well what I did is I created a gradient node and I used Control plus T with the node wrangler add-on enabled. That gives us a mapper node and a texture coordinate node. I switched to object data and I rotated minus 90 degrees on the Y axis. Then I played a little bit with the location and the scale until there was a gradient that came from the top of the ball. I added a math node in and I set that to power mode. That gives us a much more gradual gradient if you run it through power. Then, I added one more math node, I set that to multiply, and I used that to increase the overall effect. I used this new gradient to drive the strength of the emission shader. Now I could tweak the strength, the gradient, and the colour until I get the lighting setup that I want and I get this really creepy sort of magical look. In the end I actually cranked up the multiply value to be quite a lot higher than what you just saw there because I thought it looked pretty good if it was nice and strong. So no medieval or fantasy scene would be complete without lots of candles, especially Snape's office because it's described in the books as being really dark and gloomy all the time. The candle itself was very straightforward, just a cylinder with some simple sculpting to add a few drips of wax running down the sides. I didn't bother using Dino Topple for this, I just kept hitting the remesh button whenever I needed some more topology and that actually worked like a treat. The flame for the candle was an image texture of a flame that I got off the internet. I plugged it into an emission shader and then I mixed that with a transparent shader. I used the same image texture as the mix value factor. It didn't come with an alpha unfortunately but it did have this nice black background so I just crunched the values in a colour ramp until all of the black parts disappeared and you were only left with the flame in the final render. I reduced the roughness of the wax material, then I added a little bit of subsurface scattering to make it look like more realistic wax. Then I added a noise node and I just plugged that into the bump which gave us a little bit of extra detail. The texturing for the candlestick was also done in substance painter. I even added a little bit of wax and some drips going around the bottom of the drip tray. I think it's a real testament to modern 3D software that I created this entire candle in less than 30 minutes from start to finish and I think it looks pretty good. To finally complete the desk I needed to model just one more thing and that's books. The paper inside the books was made by altering the scale value of a Musgrave texture. I plugged the Musgrave texture into the bump node of the paper. That gives us this nice wavy sort of old paper texture but you don't have to worry about having proper UV maps lined up or anything like that. I created some alpha maps in Photoshop and I used them to define like the names on the titles. So now you can see that I'm just tackling the rest of the room, trying to get the basic composition into place. By this point I actually already had a pretty good idea in mind of how I was going to set up the camera and the sort of shape that the room would be. I knew that a lot of the objects in this scene were going to be covered in a layer of dust, so I'm going to show you how I added some procedural dust to this portion bottle. I created a principal node and I added that into the material shader along with the glass that was already there. I gave it the colour and the roughness of some light dust. If we mix this material with the glass you can see that the dust gets evenly distributed all over the model and it doesn't look very good because real dust tends to build up on top of objects so we need to replicate that effect. I added a geometry node which has an output called normal. The normal output gives objects a different colour depending on the direction they're facing. If we plug the normal output into the separate RGB node, we can grab just the blue colours. 
These are the faces that are looking up on the Y axis. If we plug that into our mix node, we now get dust that only goes on the top and not the bottom of the objects. But the effect is really harsh right now. We need to find a way to make it more gradual. So just like that crystal ball effect earlier on, I used the math node set to power and that gave us a more smooth gradient. By changing the value of the power node, I could easily alter the distribution of the dust. To add a final touch of realism to the dust, I added a noise texture and I mixed that with the power value via the mix RGB node set to multiply. Once you crack the mix node up to one, you can see that it adds this noisy pattern to the distribution of the dust. You can play around with the detail and the scale of the noise to get different effects. Finally, if we take this into rendered mode, you can see that we've got a pretty realistic dust pattern on the portion bottle. The last thing I did here was just to turn this dust material into a group node. I have a video all about group nodes if you don't know how to make one, but basically what that allows us to do is we can drop that dust material now into any material in the scene. We don't have to keep making the same dust material all the time. You'll see me do that later on in the video. I unfortunately didn't have time to model loads of details into the back of the chair, but I didn't want the chair to be really plain. So I made a reference image into a stencil in Substance Painter and I could just then paint on some of the detail as a normal map. It didn't look too bad, I thought, considering this is actually a really very low poly chair as well. Okay, so I knew that the scene was going to need loads of more candles, so I started working on some candelabras. Candelabras are what you call those fancy, like, stands that you have loads of candles on. You see them in churches and things. They're a really good way to make a scene look really creepy and gothic. The top arms on the candelabras were made with a curve path, and I just gave it a little bit of thickness in the settings. The bottom legs we made in a slightly different way. I got a plane and I used a little bit of proportional editing and some loop cuts to move them roughly into the right shape. Just like that snake that I made earlier on, I held down control while I clicked and that allowed me to just extrude out the basic shape and then I solidified the whole thing and I added a subdivision surface modifier just to smooth it off a little bit further. I plugged the base metal material into that dust node group that I made earlier on. It added a nice layer of dust over the top of the mesh without any extra work. I was ready to render out at this point, but I did this quick test render in Eevee and I noticed the composition had a little bit of a problem. The left hand side of the image is very blank, there's a lot of empty space there. When you combine it with the fact that the walls are already pretty bare, it adds too much blank space to the render. So I got this reference image of a little bookshelf and I decided just to add that behind the desk. I duplicated the book I made earlier, I removed the titles since they wouldn't be visible anyway, then I made a colour ramp with various shades of colours and I used the random output of an object node that would give each book a random colour. Then I just mixed that colour in with the base texture using a mix RGB node. The final touch here was just to duplicate the book around the shelves and make them seem a bit random in order. I selected a few and pulled them out slightly so they wouldn't all be perfectly aligned either. So with all the modelling done, it was time to prepare the scene for rendering. The lighting setup was fairly simple. There was a spotlight shining on the desk. I wanted it to look like there was a sort of skylight in the roof, letting a bit of moonlight or something into the room. There was a few lights dotted around. They were shaded green to give the whole thing like a sickly hue. There was also a light on the right hand side that replicated a fireplace. And finally, there was a few lights above the candles. I added an empty object into the scene and I moved it in front of the candle on the desk. Then I enabled depth of field in the camera settings and I used that empty as the focal point of the camera. Then I went into the world settings and I started setting up that volumetric effect. I just changed the volume shader to be a volume scatter node. I gave it a sort of green hue as well and I turned down the values to be really very low. If you don't use low values for something like this, it's going to look like a sauna. I actually managed to get away with using a fairly low sample count for this scene. I think about 600, which I was glad of because it still took about an hour and a half to render. The raw render came out looking something like this. I then used the, some denoising on the render. I put it into Photoshop and I did some extra compositing. 
the final render with a couple of tweaks came out looking like this. I made some changes to the colour grading. I added a little bit of dust into the beam of light and I also added a little bit of noise back into the image because I don't like how clean denoising makes everything look. Overall, I was really happy with how this image came out, although like always, I wish I had more time to work on it. The blend file for this scene will be available on my Patreon this week. If you liked this video, please hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you for the next video in a couple of days time. See you later guys.